Are you struggling to turn your leads into paying clients efficiently? Well, you're not alone. Streamlining your lead booking process can make a massive difference in your conversion rates. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. In today's video, we're breaking down how to streamline your lead booking process to turn more leads into clients, not only faster, but also with less effort. We'll map out the essential workflow steps, what to automate versus what to handle manually, and explain how to use both a CRM and project management tool throughout the process. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to optimize your leads process to drive more conversions with ease. If you're ready to streamline your leads booking process to convert more clients, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click that bell icon for notifications. Let's dive in. So before you go ahead and streamline your leads process, the first thing that you are going to have to do, step one is actually map out your process. So here we have our workflow mapping spreadsheet and I want to show you an easy way. This doesn't have to be like a crazy flow chart or anything like that. I'm going to give you some quick examples of how you can map this process out. Now this has also been something that has been so requested by our subscribers to offer as an actual product and exciting news that in the coming weeks we are going to have this added to our product shop. So we usually sell this with our honey book course, which is our CRM that we use, but keep an eye on this video. I'm going to go ahead and drop a comment below once this is actually live and ready in the next few weeks. Okay. So when it comes to mapping out your lead process or any process in your business, it doesn't have to be complicated. Like I mentioned, you don't have to have all these crazy flow charts. Now you can, if that's how you visually process best, but all this spreadsheet is, is basically writing out in words, what is happening happening, right? So you can see that this would trigger when the client fills out the contact form on your website. Right after that happens, what do you want to happen? Do you want to send an email to book a consult call? Do you want to include a brochure? Yes or no. If they don't end up booking a call, do you want to send a follow-up? Maybe 48 hours. If they still don't book a call, do you want to send another follow-up? So this is where you're gonna get your gears turning. Also feel free to pause this video and take a look at what we have here and gain some inspiration for it. But bottom line is you want to map out your ideal flow. This can be a mix of what you're doing already, but definitely map out you know, what your ideal scenario is. Also know that this whole process is going to be trial and error. You may not nail it on the first time. Having this process mapped out and having it clear and systematized is absolutely going to increase your conversions immediately. But then you're gonna go into the testing phase where you say, how's the cadence? Are people responding to one email more than another? And is there a reason for that? Should we maybe switch up the copy on email two or three, et cetera? So that's the first step. You're going to want to actually write down, you can also do this in a Google doc and just brainstorm or Pro tip, use the help of AI and ChatGPT and be like, help me build a lead follow-up process for my business. This is what I do. Ask me the questions you need. And then they'll also help you with also writing all that email copy and really getting you started in the right direction. So that is step number one is mapping out the process. You could also see this would be like the onboarding phase as well. So when we talk about your lead booking process, we're talking about when a lead inquires and you're nurturing them to get them to take the next step, whether that's make a selection in a brochure, book a call with you. Then after you send a proposal to work with you, there's still another additional sequence where you wanna make sure that you are following up with them in case they don't sign the proposal and you're nurturing them. And then once you actually book them, the nurturing does not end. It actually increases, right? So you want to make sure that you are sending them a welcome email with the next steps. They feel super secure and excited to get to work with you because they feel already taken care of and you just officially started working together. So now once you're mapping out this process, I want to give you a tip that you should not be afraid to follow up. A lot of people are like, I don't want to nag people. I don't want to come across as XYZ. 
and I totally get it and there's definitely a limit but people are expecting to be followed up with. If someone is annoyed by the amount of follow-ups and they're like please stop bothering me they are going to finally respond to you and be like I am not interested. So do not be afraid to follow up. Things get lost. People need to be nurtured and continue making that decision in their mind and as you're following up you want to make sure it's not just hey just checking in do you have any questions but give them value. Do you have any resources that could be of help for them? Do you have any client case studies of people like them that you can show the result of working with you? So definitely don't be afraid to follow up with your people because that is what is going to absolutely increase your conversions. So next, I actually want to show you what this process could look like in two different tools. Now we use our favorite CRM HoneyBook. If you want to check it out and get a percentage off your first year, go ahead. There's a link in the description. You can check it out and get a free trial. The other tool that we love to use is ClickUp, which is our project management tool. Now we do not use our lead follow-up process in ClickUp any longer. It's all in HoneyBook, but we have many Many clients who do and I want to go through the difference between the two systems and the pros and cons of each of them so in HoneyBook this is how we actually have our automation set up so I will talk about the benefits of automations shortly but as you can see here in the automation you'll see we've mapped out the entire flow of our lead process I'll go through this in a second I'll also give you some tips on things that we've done in the past how we're doing this now how it has evolved over time but if I come back into my CRM a CRM is going to be not only where you have things like automations because you can have that in your project management tool as well but where it reigns supreme over using a project management tool is it also has tools like schedulers to be able to quickly send your availability and book calls with your leads and clients. This can replace tools like Calendly or Acuity. Then we also have templates like contracts, invoices, proposals, brochures, and those are the things that are going to be lacking in your project management tool. HoneyBook is actually its own payment processor and e-sign documentation. So this is having all of that information in one place. Now we still use a project management tool, but essentially when a lead comes through our pipeline, the whole entire nurturing process and tracking process from inquiry to sales call to proposal, follow up to welcome email is all handled inside HoneyBook. They don't actually come into our project management tool until they've become a client. So this is also a key question that we get often, which is I have both tools. Do I need them both? How do I make them talk to each other? And the key is with any tools in your tech stack, there are going to be tools that do their thing really, really well and you're gonna have to have multiple tools, you wanna make sure there's minimal overlap between the two, unless it's automated, and that each tool has its own unique purpose and you and your team know exactly what that is. So let me go ahead into my templates and show you a couple quick examples. You can see in here, these are actually templates that we sell in our shop, but here you can see how beautiful this pricing guide looks within HoneyBook. It's basically like a mini website, right? So you can have the builder is super clean and user-friendly. You can showcase case studies. You can put a scheduler in there. So that's an example of a brochure and pricing guide. Then I can go back and I'll show you an example of a proposal, meaning like a contract and invoice. So here on the first page, you can still showcase your services. You could do things like embed custom videos, and then you move on to having that contract in here. Obviously we don't have one in here, but this is going to have like the e-sign capabilities and then the invoice, and then they can go ahead and pay and become your client. So you can see how sleek and clean that process looks. That's what a good CRM is going to give you. Now, when we go into a project management tool now, we also sell this template in our shop. This is where this is going to be super clean, still going to track your leads and process. We can still automate things in this, but it's not going to have those key features like contracts, invoices, and schedulers. But in a CRM and leads pipeline in your project management tool, 
You can do things like create a pipeline of who you're connecting with, who booked a call, who have you sent any proposals to, who is booked, or maybe it was a lost lead or not a good fit. You can track pertinent information here, and then you can create automations that if they're moving a certain stage or if you click a button, it can send an automated email to them. So there's definitely still a lot you can do. It's just going to be a bit more manual and you're going to need to have additional tools on top of this like DocuSign or Stripe or Wave to be able to send contracts, invoices, and schedulers. So you want to know the difference of am I having this process, my leads process in a CRM like HoneyBook or am I going to do a more manual approach and do it in my project management tool? So finally, now let's talk about the power of automation. So once you actually map out your process, then you decide which type of tool you're gonna use to manage that process. Now it's time to actually build it out. So I actually wanna walk you through our exact process for our HoneyBook setup inquiries. And then I'll talk to you about, you know, the things that we've done in the past, why we've switched, and the power of testing and reiterating and refining again and again. So we used to send an autoresponder to our leads being like, hey, thanks for reaching out. We'll reach back out in 24 to 48 hours. Well, we found that the conversion rate was not as high to get them to book on a sales call because even if it was 30 minutes, one day, a few hours, if they were inquiring with multiple people and someone else got back to them sooner, they were gonna book a call with them and go with that lead potentially first. So we wanted to give them immediate satisfaction of what they wanted, giving them the information they need, and then allowing them to book a call with us. Now, depending on your process, it's gonna to be totally custom to you, depending on your ideal client, depending on your services, right? So this is just our unique experience. So now what we do is as soon as the lead inquires, we go ahead and send them our HoneyBook Services brochure with an email being like, thank you so much for reaching out. We would love to see how we can serve you with HoneyBook. Feel free to schedule a consultation and check out our service brochure below. And then they'll be able to click on the service brochure, get the information, pricing, et cetera, and pre-qualify themselves to see if it's in within budget. So by the time you get on the sales call with them, they're 80% sold. It's really just a matter of answering their questions and seeing if it's the right fit. So as soon as they inquire for a HoneyBook setup, this is gonna send. Now, if they do not book a call, 24 hours later, we're going to follow up with them. Now, every single one of our follow-up emails are approved before sending, not only so we can customize it, but also in case they like wrote back and we're like, hey, I actually have a question, et cetera, et cetera. We don't want to have a bad client experience and know that these things are being automated behind the scenes. So in here you could see, insert personal note, this is where I actually will take the time to read through their inquiry and take some time to get to know their needs, if it's a good fit, and then provide that value to them. So the same thing, three days later, I'll follow up again. Seven days after that, I'll follow up again. And then after that, after the first three emails, we'll then move them to a three month follow up. Now we used to actually stop the automation here and then we would just be like, okay, they're a deadly, they're not interested, they didn't take fast action. But we realized that many of our leads are not going to make a decision within a two week span, right? They need some more time, they need some more nurturing. So instead of stopping at two weeks, we actually have extended this to 12 months and we may even go beyond that eventually because someone may inquire, they might not be totally ready, but maybe six or 12 months later, they are. So we wanna make sure we stay top of mind, we continue to send them valuable resources. So they'll move into three month follow-up, then 90 days after that, we'll send a three month follow-up. After we send that, they'll go into six month follow-up, and then we create a task, and then they go into 12 month follow-up, we create a task. And now the reason that we don't have canned emails waiting for us at six and 12 months is because those are gonna be extremely specific and custom to that person. So if we're following up with a lead six months and 12 months later, we wanna make sure that we are rereading their inquiry, asking them if they still need help with that thing, and maybe even sending them some resources for that specific thing they were struggling with. We publish a YouTube video every single week. Chances are there's probably some materials that we've created along the way that could speak to their exact pain point. 
So this is going to really take the nurturing and customization to the next level, making sure that you're providing them value. So then they see, okay, if they're taking the time to provide me value and give me information I need, and I'm not even their client, imagine what will happen when I do become their client. So that's an example of things that we have implemented in the this past year. Um, and this is because of what we were seeing in the industry, guidance we've gotten from our coaches, different things that we've tested and then realized that, you know, we archived a ton of leads and then we followed up with them maybe six, 12 months later, and then they were ready to move forward. So do not be afraid to follow up, set your cadence. The other thing about this kind of weird feeling of being like, am I bothering them? If you have these things automated, whether it's in a CRM or a project management tool, or you put it on your task list for six months later, number one, it's going to relieve the brain space of who do I have to follow up with? Number two, it's more of like an item on your checklist. So it's less of like that feeling that you can get of like, oh, should I follow up with them? Should I not? Like this is just going to be a part of your routine and your process. So Closing out with this automation, you can see if after 12 months, then we can consider them a dead lead and archive the project. But if they do end up booking a session at any point within that 12 month sequence, it will then move the pipeline stage to booked call and then we'll actually deactivate the automation. Then we move on to having that call, setting the proposal, having the leads follow ups. I'm not gonna go through that whole process today. If you guys want more information, on that process, feel free to drop a comment below and let me know. But I feel like you've gotten a pretty good idea of what it looks like to have a solid leads process from inquiry to sales call booking. The process from sales call to proposal to welcome is super, super similar. You're just going to have an automation that you apply once that proposal is sent, have the follow up emails just like these. And then once they actually book, then you're going to send the welcome email and begin the onboarding process. So wrapping this all up, I hope that gave you a ton of inspiration and ideas of how you can streamline your leads booking process, but it all begins with understanding what a good leads process looks like and then mapping yours out. If you have any questions about what specific tools to use or any bumps in the road as you're mapping yours out, feel free to drop a comment below. I would be happy to give you some guidance. I hope this video was helpful and eye-opening to you, and I know that you're going to crush it as you work on streamlining your leads process. And that's a wrap. You now know the step-by-step -step process to streamline your leads booking process to convert more leads into paying clients. Remember, the key is knowing what to automate and systematize and what to handle manually to make sure you're not only saving time, but nurturing your leads to the max. At DeSilva Life, we've helped countless businesses and agencies streamline their booking process to drive more conversions and scale successfully. So if you're ready to streamline yours, go ahead and visit DeSilvaLife.com slash contact to book a call with us today. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And go ahead and send this to any of your team members or other fellow peers and agency owners that could benefit from it. With that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.